over the past few days i don't you know i can't count it i can't call it but instead of focusing on the conference and in black politics um Tariq nasheed and his many 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 minions have chosen to make the conference into something that it was not so I want to first of all start by apologizing to this young lady um, whose picture was up on Tariq Nasheed's page who made the conference into an LBG sort of orgy party. And if you were there, you know that's not what it is. You know that's not what any of this is about. You know that this is smears and lies from someone who doesn't have any tricks in his bag except to kind of roast people and just kind of make up stuff. And I don't really... You know, I think on one level you have to blame him because he just lies. But on the other level, you have to blame the people who follow him because there's no accountability. Nobody says like, well, what are you talking about? Like, what does that mean? Like, I haven't seen any indication of that. I've seen Yvette stand up for black men when you were talking, when you were trying to sell mink slide tickets. I've seen Yvette go to go to get get heat from black women for standing up for black men and black women and saying we have to be a collective like where does this come from where is the evidence no there's no evidence the only thing that we have is the same people and maybe i should understand it when i understand how people get manipulated into things and if your base of people is is people who had problems getting girls so they bought your macking books and then when the macking didn't work you started calling them bed wenches you just said well it's not because my macking game don't work it's because these are just bed wenches you dig and that's why we can't have reparations you dig because we got too many bed wenches you dig that's what he even said about me and antonio i love when yvette and antonio came along you dig You know, he said, he said, you're an LGBT organization. When I want to ask anybody, when have we been an LGBT organization? And the thing is, I need you people who are FBA to just do research. If you want to know how, what my feelings are on LGBT issues, I have a video where I said the LGBT people are just stealing from, uh, from the ADOS movement. They're stealing, they're trying to paint themselves in blackness and they need to build their own movement. Our movement is not theirs. If you would just do a little research, you wouldn't be so easily manipulated. This is not an LGBT movement. It never has been. I don't even know how you were on board and you never knew what we were about. Y'all got to stop just jumping on the next thing smoking. If you didn't know what we were about, I know, I, I, I was LGBT. If you had watched one video, there's nothing that I say more than there's nothing that I say more than that ADOS has to be a collective and that race should come first. I don't say anything more than that. So you have to be sort of a moron to believe differently. You have to be, and let me just say this. I always know what Tariq Nasheed says in a video because the, everybody just comes in my, I have open DMs. So everybody comes in my DMs and my messages in the comment section and say the same thing Tariq just said. Like, I don't have any problem disagreeing with anybody. I don't care what anybody says about me, especially if I don't value you. I don't care what he said, child, what he said. Yvette is a grasshopper. Was it a grasshopper? It was a something, something weird. Oh, and then I had on a, I had on a chopper suit. Well, it might've been, but I was wearing a chopper suit on Capitol Hill. Like, I don't even know whether, I don't know what you were doing, Tariq. I don't know. I don't know. See, this is, and I'm going to get to the data aspect. This is not going to be just a back and forth. I'm going to get to why all of this matters, right? Because I know a lot of you will be like, Yvette, we just got to get back on. We got to get back on point. None of this, none of this, none of this matter. We got to get back on point. I'm gonna, none of this matter. No, it does matter. Not to me. I don't, I don't value Tariq's opinion. I don't value anybody. In, I don't know what Tariq was doing. I know what I was doing in my chopper suit. And I think we have to get honest about what you were doing in your chopper suit and what you've always been doing. What you've always been doing, whether you in or out of it, whether you in or out of your chopper suit, you've always just kind of wanted to be famous. You've always been this guy. This is the same guy in the Diddy video. You just want to be famous. And I remember a friend told me, like, if somebody wants fame or money, don't give it to them. Like, that's the person you don't give it to. If somebody wants fame or money, don't give it to them. Don't give it to them.
You had your chopper suit on too, except I was doing, except in my suit, and I ain't have no money. We all don't have no money. But in my suit, I was doing the thing that led me here. I was working in politics and learning about politics. See, the thing that you have to do, the thing that you have to do, and we, we talked about this with Obama. You have to, as a group, we have to, as a group, put substance over symbolism. So what am I saying? You can't be so worried about a suit that I wore in 2003 or two or whatever it was that you're not seeing that the suit is being used to take your attention away from a black political movement that helps you. I don't care. That's fine. Make up. This man done had to stoop. So, you know, he's struggling because he had to stoop so low. He done had to make up addictions. Yvette's a crackhead. She's on them narcotics. And then everybody come into my deal. Oh, Yvette, we, you, you on drugs. That's I should have known. I should have known. You, if you, and let me just say this. I need Tariq stop, to stop being so dated. You know, the last time I heard a crackhead joke. I mean, the, I don't, I don't, there is this fanaticism around him that I just don't understand. Like if anybody else just told a bunch of 90s joke, it would be like, this dude's a clown. But like for some reason, the dudes who like bought the Mackin books and got manipulated by him, yeah, we can't talk to girls, but Tariq's gonna put us on game. Tariq's been trying to put y'all on game for a long time. And he's been manipulating y'all a long time. And so what happens when you get manipulated, you don't understand you're being manipulated. You don't understand that everything Tariq does shows that he's an idiot. And see, but you know, he got to be smart, Yvette. He got all that money. You pocket wash him, but you see he got all that money. He got to be smart. You don't have to be smart to manipulate people. You just got to be smarter than the people you're manipulating. And from what I'm seeing, that ain't hard. So let's go through a little bit. Because I know a lot of people are going to say, why would you go back here? Why would you have this conversation? Because, of course, Tariq could never become anything other than what he is, right? He could never, ever, like, why would you even have this conversation, Yvette? You're above him, Yvette. Well, I remember somebody else who people said could never become anything and never be anybody in politics. But guess what? He did. And eventually he cleaned up real good. And he became very useful to people as a gatekeeper. So just because somebody never ever underestimate people who are good at manipulation, never do it. And I'll tell you that you do that at your own peril. I'm going to tell you that because let me, let me move this up. How many of you all remember, um, I don't know if you remember, but how many of you I remember when um, Tariq Nasheed was in that, um, um, God, what was the movie, child? Uh, um, uh, that, that Michael Moore documentary. How many of you I remember that? See, here's the problem. I don't see, I don't see a whole lot of difference between, between, between these two. I don't see a whole lot of difference. I see two pimps. And don't say, well, Yvette, you're taking, you're, 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 just, you're, you're just as bad as him. You're bringing his name through the mud. Anybody who ever put out something called wash your ass ain't got no name to put through the mud. He ruined his own name. He ain't got no name. Pimps are always looking for a play. And you can't give them room to make a play. Now, let me deal with some other stupid stuff people are saying. People are saying, well... Well, Yvette, I mean, that was just a skit. That was just a skit. That was a comedy sketch. That's just like Denzel Washington in that movie. He wasn't really a dirty cop, was he, Yvette? See there? I'm going to walk off. No, understand something. Tariq Nasheed, when he, remember when he went after JB and said JB was a, um, a fed or whatever he was? And said, I can't get near politicians, but JB can 
you got near a politician, but you let Michael Moore, who is a Democrat and has been a Democrat and just capes for Democrats all the time, you let Michael Moore dress you up like the worst kind of pimp. You let Michael Moore dress you up like Big Alone. There was a better way to do that if you wanted to be involved in something, if you just didn't want to be famous. But that's all you want to do is be famous. All you want to do is be seen. What did Suge Knight say? If you don't want a producer in the videos, dancing around, want to be in front of the camera, that was probably his best moment, his only moment, really. You've always wanted to be famous, and you don't care how them white people dressed you up. I don't even think you dressed yourself up that way. I think they told you, I think they told you, we need you to look this way. We need you to put on, we need you to put on them rings and we need you to, yeah, show us how a real pimp do big alone. Show us how a real pimp act. And let me just say, don't tell me it's 20 years ago either, because this man has never come out and say, you know what? I, I was young. I was an idiot and I did some stupid stuff. Just like he's never apologized for the single mom stuff. Just like he's never apologized for none of it. He never said I was wrong. I shouldn't have, I shouldn't have portrayed black men like that. I shouldn't have run up to white men on the street looking like this. I shouldn't have, I, sh I, I undermined black politics by playing a fool. He should have never done this. This undermines black politics. He allowed himself to be a character in this movie. And like, listen, we all evolve. I've evolved. And my policies, but you ain't gonna never find no video. I, you, you ain't gonna never find no video like me, like this. I can't remember when this movie came out, but I might have been working around Capitol Hill, working at this time while he was just while he was doing this thing with his rings on. Hey, and go watch the whole Michael Moore film. Just go watch it. It's cringe worthy. Hey, brother, I got these heels for you. You wanna go walk the strip, brother? You gonna be my hoe? I'm telling you, I don't think he has apologized because I don't think he feels bad for any of it. I don't think, you know, if you, if you, if you grow and you change and you, and you become a different person, you say, you know what? I was new. I know. I was just trying to get put on. But the problem is from the Diddy video to this, to to um to everything that this man has done he's always just trying to be famous you have to watch people you let me see if i can find this other thing but you have to watch people who all they want to do is be in the spotlight if all you want to do all your life is be in front of the camera you have to watch people like that You know, when we go back to the to the to this picture where he was, you know, where he was with the congressman. The congressman says, "Aren't you aren't you embarrassed?" That was a very interesting moment. If you get a chance, go back and watch the Michael Moore documentary. He says, "Aren't you embarrassed?" And I wanted to ask Tariq Nasheed that same question. Like, after people kept telling me, you know, and I went back and looked, like, what he was saying in the last two shows, aren't you embarrassed that you keep taking advantage of people who watch you with all these different, all these different things? Fundraisers for business, fundraisers for apps that you ain't never put up, fundraisers to build houses in Haiti, fundraisers for, like, calling me a grasshopper and toning you a frog and talking about strap-ons and all kind of nasty, musty, duh. aren't you, I'm not embarrassed, I don't. I think you're a joke, but like, like, aren't you embarrassed? And let me tell you why this matters for everybody who's in there. Like, why we got to talk about, why we got to talk about Tariq? We got, we just got to let this go. Listen, I said, if I throw a chair, you throw a chair. If you throw a chair, I throw a chair. Over the weekend, what happened was I threw a chair and everybody said, man, why we fighting? I don't like to fight. You know, I couldn't get into the military because I got flat feet. Listen, when you have a political project that is, that is, that is like, that is intellectual property. That's what that is. That is what we have done here. We have done that together. We have done that 
boots on the ground, y'all at the Supreme Court, doing chapters, doing all of that stuff, meeting with council people. And then somebody wants to come in and say, that's not yours, that's ours, and we're going to take it and we're going to walk off with it. You better fight for it, because if you don't, you'll have the politics that we have now. Because let me tell you something, Tariq ain't just, and all his people who just loud and walk around and throwing dirty dishes at us and all kind of weird stuff, that is not, they're not just his people. They're in your family. All of our families, we know a Tariq. We know somebody that come to the to the barbecue and just, well, I'm a Moor. Why well, I, 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 I don't even consider myself American because I'm a, I'm a, I'm a refugee. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a man of, I, I'm a man of war and I'm a, I'm a, I feel like I'm captured. I'm gonna go to Africa someday. Tariq is just a representation of the dysfunction that exists. And if we want to have good politics, we're going to have to deal with it. If you have a problem, it's just like having a problem in your body or something that you have to heal. You don't just cover it up. You have to pop that thing. Get all that stuff out of there and you got to heal it. You got to do it. A lot of little con stuff been going on. Somebody put this up on a comment. Tariq couldn't monetize Pan-Africanism, so he started the Melanoid Nation, melanated people across the globe. He could monetize ADOS, though so he started the Foundational Black Americans. Tariq generates income from his supporters' emotions and hostilities. And let me tell you, supporters, y'all got to get out of that. Y'all got to figure it out. Y'all got to figure it out because we can't do politics if y'all just if y'all are just coalescing around one man as opposed to one agenda. If you're coalescing around how you think you feel about me without having watched one video and based on what he says, that's not going to work in terms of our politics. I hate to be the one to tell you. On Tariq's show, he implied that Dr. Sandy Darity, who has who has written on reparations and made his life around reparations, you know. And we anchor it in. He, he suggested that Dr. Sandidarity was, was gay or he was sleeping with Antonio. That's who people are rallying around. That's your guy. That's your man. This type of nonsense is an albatross around the neck of black politics. He said, well, y'all know how Tariq do. He just be guessing. He don't do no real research like he did. Go look on Antonio Moore's Twitter page. He, he don't do no real research. Well, uh, uh, um, I, I, I tried to find Dr. Sandy Derry. What kind of name is Sandy? Now, first of all, first of all, a Negro named Tariq Nasheed. And what's your real name? Hmm? Why'd you change it? Why don't you ever answer any questions? But a Negro named Tariq Nasheed is why is his name Sandy Derry. He, he don't like he married. And he be all up on the tone all the time. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's all you got is insults. Like I, like I don't think people who follow you know you're scrambling, but I know you're scrambling because all you have are insults. And then you know, Dr. Sandy Darity is married. I don't, I don't even know. You couldn't even get the research right there. Well, do we have a kid? Do we have a kid? He, if, I mean, I want to know. Do we got babies? Tariq. How do y'all not know this man is scrambling? Yuck, 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 yuck. He, 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 he. Yeah, she old grasshopper crackhead. I don't, Tariq, that don't matter to me, child. Whatever, ain't nothing you said to me ever mattered to me. Ain't never mattered to Antonio either. But, I do have some questions for you, for you, Tariq. See, because what you have to, I, I think what you have to and what we all have to understand is that people say, well, they're going to do FBA. We ain't going to do ADOS no more. We're going to do FBA. We're going to leave. We're going to, we're going to, and start your own chapter. Don't try to take over no chapter. Go start your own stuff. You little slick, you little slick, slicksters. But I want you to understand that things follow you. Big things. And the man who is this man right here will never lead a political movement anyway. So what, what do they call it? The dominant society. This man is a joke. And he's a joke to me too. 
He's never going to lead a political movement anywhere. He's never going to, this man here will never be taken seriously. Anywhere. Because that's not all he's done. He's done a whole bunch of stuff since then. He's done a whole, he's, a, he's talked a whole bunch of stuff that don't make no sense all the way since then. This man is, and he got, all of his content is online, right? He will never be taken seriously. He can never lead anybody in terms of any kind of serious political movement. He can only lead you to his pockets. I said it last time and I'm going to say it again. A movement, any movement, any serious movement dies in a pimp's hand. Now, I'm not going to say whether not he a real pimp because a lot of people been in my message saying he ain't no real pimp. He's a lame who learns stuff. I don't know, so I ain't going to talk about it. But I heard, I guess a lot of people in my message saying it's a fraud. All I know is that he don't have to be a pimp on the stroll to pimp the people who follow him. And he's pimping y'all. You invest yourself in him. Yeah, it's a rig, man. You funny. You funny. That's why you my dude. That's why you my guy. He took, and he's already look at I want you, I want to I want to call something else out. I want to I want to make sure you understand how slick this dude is. He's already pivoting, right? He couldn't pimp the ADOS thing. Boys tried to co-opt it too. Everybody tried to co-opt it. He couldn't pimp that. He, and that's what the whole Claude Anderson thing was about. It wasn't about it wasn't about that's why I had to come so hard because it wasn't about just him. He tried to say this whole reparations thing is me. Okay, then Tariq, he can, because he's Boyce's guy now, Boyce and Tariq can come in and say, we run it. And now all of us have been sidelined because of what you allowed him to say on The Breakfast Club. So I got to come in and say, no, this political project is not yours. We do not base anything, like you said, on color. We base it on lineage. We, don't do, we do not believe that, that do, for self, do for selfism is the foundation because we understand that nobody in America did for themselves. They got done for they got help from government and we got red line. So we believe that everything you're saying is wrong. We are not anchored in you. And that's why we have been successful in terms of going mainstream and making this a conversation and pushing this. And you have not. So you are trying to steal a movement. And I saw it and I called it. You have to call it though. And you can't be, let me just say this people who say, Yvette, what we fighting? What we fighting for? Why are you throwing chairs? Let me just say that. You cannot be so desirous. You cannot be so desperate for peace that you don't see when somebody's at war with you. Let me say it again. You cannot be so desperate for peace that you don't see when somebody's at war with you. I wasn't at war with Tariq. What do I don't? I'm 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 a giant. I don't play with I don't this is I don't play with the minions. I don't bother him. And let me just address one other thing. A lot of people say, well, Yvette, we don't even understand why Tariq was ever a part of this. You should have you we you should have had him out. I heard that from a lot of people, especially women, and I understand you. But here's the problem. The community at large I know Tariq has more black male followers than women. I agree with you. But positioned him in such a way that he would have to mess up in order for us not to deal with him. He was positioned as a leader. He is not. We know that. He is not a serious person nor a serious thinker. We understand that. But that is how he positioned himself. And that is how his game right, co-signed him. And everybody started saying, that, please don't be divisive. Please leave Tariq alone. Don't mess with him. Leave him. Let him stay. Said, okay, we, we told you, okay, we gotta let him stay because they positioned him as something he's not. They, you positioned him, but as long as he, even if he's a comedian or whatever, as long as he's supportive, we will give him the benefit of the doubt. We will. And then he messed up, and he went off the rails on opportunity zones, and everybody said we went off cold. But hold on, we didn't go off cold right here. You know, at the conference, Zarina Harris made a case against Opportunity Zones. Then Trump comes then and Trump comes out and talks about them. And all of a sudden, Tariq is on that page. Now he ain't checked with nobody. And we made a case against Opportunity Zones at the ADOS conference. If you had been on code, you would not have contradicted us in that way. And then Antonio corrected you. 
and you got your panties in a bun instead of saying, you know what? Maybe I messed up. Maybe I went too far. You caused this whole mess from the beginning. This is you. And for those of you who say, well, Yvette, you should just be higher. Don't do that. Don't fight. Don't you fight him. Don't fight him. Understand something. If somebody breaks into your house, you don't clean up your house while the person is still rumbling around in your house. You got to fight them out. I don't know what you got to call the cops, pick up your gun, you know, or, or, or wrestle them to the ground. But you can't clean up the glass that the person broke to get into your house while the person is still in your house. And Tariq is in my house. That's where we are. You can go back to doing, I would prefer you didn't, but you can go back to selling DVDs or whatever your pimp thing is, more us or... I don't know how Negroes let you, I don't know how you Negroes let this man run off with all the stuff that he ran off with. Y'all even, this is how, this is how we got here. Tariq is talking about, well, Yvette decided with the white supremacists and, 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 and Jared Taylor. No, I said that I saw a video with you debating them and you were awful. But y'all let him in this political space. When he started debating and going on Tucker Carlson, y'all should have said, hey, bro, this ain't you. Come back to comedy. Come back to tickling us. Don't do this. You lost with Tucker Carlson. He got, like somebody said online, he got his wingtips all over your chest. He stomped you out. You can't debate nobody. Don't do this. But instead of doing that, y'all said, yeah, Tariq. You go, Tariq. Although a lot of y'all a lot of y'all in there did say he, he, he messed up, but you didn't say it loud enough. You didn't make him stop thinking he was a political-minded person. This is your fault for putting him in this space. We would not be fighting if he were not in this space. <clears throat> but now he's, and you know, before, this is Tariq when he was trying to co-opt ADOS. He was talking all that stuff. Oh, he was talking hard, wasn't he? I really don't care about anything these people have to say at this point. If they are not talking about reparations specifically for foundational black Americans, then everything they say is blah, blah, blah. Black people are in the middle of a soft genocide right now. None black people have been essentially deputized to harm citizens in, with impunity. So the last thing we need is damn new Green Deal. He was talking real tough on behalf of ADOS and how we, how we have a specific justice claim and we're not like everybody else and all of that. Like the same thing I've been saying, parroting me verbatim. But then the other day, he switched it up. But let me give you the context. Let me give you the context of the switch up. The grift done changed. He, he going on a new grift. So this is what somebody said to him on Twitter. He was talking about inheritance. And he said, no, white people are using inheritance money from grandparents and, and parents to start businesses. Which is true. We've talked about how people are living off inheritance right now. We've talked about that. We've talked about that. And, 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 but Tariq don't know that because he don't want to deal with no data. ADOS have studied wealth in America through and through fba knows nothing about wealth that's true y'all just know how to support Tariq. you show up to you will show up for Tariq, but you won't show up to read a book and here's what Tariq's answer is then how are immigrants from impoverished third world countries who come here from families with no generational wealth coming here uh to the u.s and getting capital to start a, a successful business that's the opposite of what ADOS is. The pimp got his hustle wrongs. You know, if you a pimp and you a hustler, you got a lot of different hustles going on. So sometimes you just get your hustle wrong. You just confuse your hustle. He just confuses hustle. That's what a pimp do. A pimp got a lot of things going on. He got one trick on the straw over here and one on the straw over here. He, he, he be using game with one of, the, one of them that he normally use with the other one. He don't know. He been acting like he ride with us. Listen, if you roll with ADOS, you would know. You would know that that you would know about you would know the differences first of all in different immigrant classes right you would know how how some of them are used to mask our failure you would know that some of them are elite you would you would know all of the stuff we've been talking about all these few months the reason that you don't know it is because you were never really down with ados you were just trying to use it to line your pockets you were never really down with us trying to be down with us trying to you would never what you were like oh this is i can i can sell some stuff on this somebody said you should have dm Tariq. no for what what i need him for 
He's the one. Wait a minute. He prov- like y'all act like this is the NAACP and the Urban League and they fight. No, we all and that's me, Antonio, and all of y'all in the chat. We all made ADOS happen, and then he created a shadow group. Do you talk to your own shadow? Your shadow is just supposed to follow you around, ain't it? That's what this was supposed to do. You, but you, you were supposed to just follow us around and amplify. You know you don't have the mind to actually anchor things in. You know you don't have that kind of mind to reek. You just have a mind to hustle. You got a good mind to hustle to people. You got a bunch of little weak men around you who, who you know, I, I say you're weak because y'all keep just going for it. Y'all just keep being the albatross. Y'all just keep coming in my DMs with the same thing Tariq said. You don't have an original thought. So if you want to be thought of differently, you got to be different. And if, and if you, let me just tell you, black men, let me tell you, I have defended black men to the end over this toxic masculinity BS and all this BS. I have defended you hard. But part of this toxic masculinity stuff is because you keep using Tariq as your representative. If you want to get this stuff gone, you got to find somebody too who's not Tariq, who doesn't say wild stuff and doesn't care how you live. Tariq doesn't care what happens to you. He doesn't care whether you eat tomorrow. He doesn't care if somebody views you as just toxic masculinity because you want to just be a man and feed your house or whatever. He don't care about that. He says stuff that's wrong and that's horrible. And so people hear it and be like, dang, that's who y'all rock with? So you, he is an albatross, not just in terms of black politics. He's an albatross around your neck because he don't care what happened to you and how irresponsible he is when he talks. Tariq cares about Tariq. That's how Nasheed rolls. You know, it's fun. He, funny how he made, he made, he made, he had, because in order to make this an LGBT organization or whatever, he had to make Antonio gay. So he found a picture from an article, an article and said, Antonio's gay. Where's the pictures of Antonio's with women? Well, Antonio's straight. I talk to Antonio every day, straight as an arrow, but he's not going to provide any pictures to you. For what? Don't nobody owe you private pictures? For what? Who are you? Somebody has to tell me who is Tariq Nasheed. How have y'all made him grandpapa? So let me just go through some, a few other things because, you know, you have to make things clear for people. You just really do. If you don't make things clear, people get very confused. So I want to get this through real quick so we can go to the calls. Yeah, I want to know what happened to the money for that More Us app too. They said that they said that Tariq said something about the Indians kept taking it down and and then the, and then he, and then it was up for a day and all of a sudden and stuff was gone. He was building houses in Haiti. Don't nobody ever did nobody ever do nothing about that. How come y'all? How come y'all don't? How come y'all don't check this man? Like there's no accountability. All you FBA Tariq Nasheed people, how come y'all don't hold this man accountable when he be running around doing stuff, doing stuff, doing stuff, doing stuff? How come y'all don't do that? And you got the, he, and he be co-signed by the shadow babbler. I don't even know what's going on half the time. But I want to be very clear. Um, I want to be very clear in terms of what I put up on Twitter, because this is what I said. I predicted this. I said that. I said that Tariq didn't have a plan. That's why I say there, there is no FBA. There is no FBA, a foundational black Americans. There, it doesn't exist because it's not a movement of any sort. It's like you ever, you ever go outside and you see, a, you see a, a shell, like a little animal has come out of a shell, like a bug, exoskeleton, I think they call it in school. FBA is an exoskeleton. I'm not trying to be mean, it just is. Because the anchoring is an ADOS. The work is an ADOS. The advocacy is an ADOS. The only thing Tariq Nasheed has are insults. He doesn't have any advocacy. So if you are, if he if you are, if you are in the space of, oh, I'm FBA, you might as well say, I'm naked outside because FBA isn't anything. Because they have no answer for this. I, and I just want to hold, hold, hold your pimp accountable. Hold your pimp accountable.
Because white American households own 90% of the national wealth. Black Americans together own 2.6%. Now, we have decided that we are going to politically advocate on behalf of reparations and a black agenda as a political heartbeat. Not just through Project Downvote, I mean, uh, Project Takeover and, and Democratic Down Ballot. Not just through that. Right? But those are some, ADOS101.com explains it. Tariq don't have an answer. The only thing he can say, he doesn't have an answer for his for his FBA brothers. The only thing he can say is that Yvette and Tone are musty, dusty grasshoppers. They musty, dusty. And they walk around with things on them for, for fornication. And they dusty and musty. And Tariq's so awful. He's the kind of Negro, you be fresh out the shower. This Negro will stand beside you and you smell like the, the spring breeze and come back and, and a lot of people be like, ooh, I stood beside them and they was real musty. And then his followers will be like, oh man, I heard they was musty. They was musty at the conference because y'all so clueless. They is musty dusty. We got to get away from the musty dusties. And he'll tell you, well, he's already shifting back to do for selferism, right? So what y'all got to do, y'all just got to get in the winner's circle. All y'all got to do is get in the winner's circle. He's nothing about politics. You just got to get around people who keep it and get it popping. That's not a plan. See, because that doesn't fix what's wrong with you. Why are you in Tariq's comments sniggling and giggling? That's fine. I don't think his comedy's all that good, but if you like it, I love it. Why are you sniggling and giggling? Think about your life. Think about your bank account. Think about your kids. Tariq has an answer for him. If you get in his winner circle, you're going to make money for him. You're going to donate to him. You're going to make money for his projects. And the only thing he's going to give you in return is puppets. Some laughs and some puppets. That's it. And so you have to ask yourself. You got all these little things running. You know, the, the Haiti one, I guess it didn't go like it would have. I was going to buy book bags. I was going to Haiti, I'm going to buy houses and book bags. And, uh, you know, we're going to get it popping. We get it popping. We always get it popping. That's what we do. We get it popping. That's what we always do is popping. You know how we do, brothers. We get it popping. These grasshoppers, they don't know how to get it popping. They catfish mouth. They got catfish mouth and... And grasshopper bodies, and they can't get it popping. But I get it popping. Tariq, if you don't shut up. And then he says, and this is why I say FBA doesn't exist. I just want to, I just want to, I just want to bring up what I said because this is the point I made. FBA doesn't exist. Nasheed doesn't have a plan for anything. He never will. He's not a serious person. Not a serious thinker. He's an agent of chaos. Jokes, you know, are not transformative politics. I want to know how he fixes this. And FBA, if y'all gonna be a movement and y'all gonna, you know, y'all gonna take over, how you gonna fix this? Answer the question. African Americans are worse off now, are, are worse off now than they were in 2000. What's the plan, Tariq? What's the plan? Well, I understand what the plan was. You should too. The end game was always to co-opt the rhetoric of ADOS, fold it into FBA, then use it to promote DVDs, crowdfunding ventures for, Tashi for Nasheed's personal enrichment. After all the roasting, Nasheed's viewership, you know, is poor too. Y'all poor in the chat, and the data tells us that. Oh, 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 Yvette and them always talking about the data, the data. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I want y'all to think about what I'm saying for one second. Just think about this. A man who created documentaries which are supposed to be based on history, there's some ahistorical stuff in there, but they're supposed to be based on history. So he's telling you that history matters and economics doesn't. In the richest country in the world, your wealth level is the most important data set you have. Now, history helps explain that data set. If you're Tariq Nasheed, you don't know that. 
Or if you know you just want to be anti-intellectual because if your group becomes more intellectual and starts thinking, they're going to say, yeah, the reason I don't have enough is because of a systemic failure and I'm going to go over here to ADOS and figure my life out. I'm not going to be over here helping Tariq keep his $2 million house. I don't care if you call me pocket watching. I think I'm hand watching. You ever watch a thief's hands? If you got a thief around you, you got to watch his hands. What you doing? Where my pocketbook at? Where my pocketbook go? Where you at? Where your hands at? Let me see them. I got to watch your hands. If you around the thief, you do watch their hand. I'm not watching your pockets. I'm watching your hands. And what goes from your hands to your pockets. And how you do what you do. So well. I want to reach people to tell me half of, half, half of black Americans born poor stay poor. That's a systemic failure. What are you going to do to fix it? You're FBA, you say. You're a better, you're a better choice than ADOS. You say that's what you say. But what are you doing? What is your plan? We put forth several plans that y'all have slammed and said don't work. Okay, what is your plan, Tariq? You're the leader of a political movement. Let's play this game all the way out. What are your plans? See, after you're done laughing at Tariq, you have to understand that he played you. It's a bait and switch. So he, he he's trying to kill ADOS. But he don't have anything to give you in return. Blacks have virtually no wealth to draw up on, draw up on in times of crisis. The data says that's that's all of y'all, nearly all. That now it might not be Tariq because he has your money, right? So it's not him, but it's you. So are you gonna worry about Tariq or you? You can watch him on YouTube if you like those crass jokes or whatever. They nasty, but if you like it, I think something's wrong with you. But that's fine. But do you have to give him your money for his projects? Most people who, in, who do projects and they, they go and get investors. Tariq always says, I live around wealthy black people. I live around wealthy black people. Well, how come none of those are ever your investors? Because one of the things, even when you look at rules for investing in America, one of the things they always say too is that they, want, they like people to have, um, they protect investors so that you have to have a certain amount of money to invest and stuff like that. So why aren't you ever going to wealthy investors? Because a lot of times people invest too to get their money back. See, I know why you aren't going to, to investors, to real investors, Tariq, because those investors want to return. If you keep taking money from Negroes, we don't know enough to know that like you should get a return on investment. If somebody just gives you 100000 or 200000 they're going to want their investment back and more especially on a project that's in its fourth or fifth installment. It's different if you're just doing Hidden Colors 1 or Hidden Colors 2, but once you're this far along in the game and you're on your fifth or sixth or seventh documentary, you expect it to look for real investors. They're going to want to return on their investment. But if you can depend on Negroes to just be like, man, Tariq makes me laugh, then you can play us, right? And that's what you've been doing. I don't know. We always have a specific plan of action. Tariq doesn't. I want to know what your answer is, Tariq. It's just that you want to replace us. And since we're just an LGBT organization and we are, we are shield for Democrats and all of that mess, I want you to know, I want to know what you're going to do. You, you're encouraging your followers to devalue data when the world is becoming even more complex. You, you need to understand data quickly now. And Tariq is telling y'all to be anti-intellectual. Same thing as Fox News. Tariq is a conservative. Now, telling your, telling your, I never tell anybody here to be less intellectual. I tell you to be more intellectual. That's so you can hold me accountable and hold your politicians accountable as well. If somebody ever tells you that the data don't matter and all that stuff, they're trying to manipulate you. They're not trying to empower you. But again, Tariq, this is the data. What are you going to do with it? What are you going to do with it? How are you going to fix the lives of the, of the black men who watch your show? I just want to know. I mean, this is the, this is the prison data. How are you going to fix that? No, because we're a political project anchored in, anchored in lineage and always have been. I want to know how you're going to fix it. Since you're going to replace the political project, are you all, FBA, are y'all going to set standards for how this is going to work and what he's supposed to do? Or is he just going to make y'all giggle? And I said this, I said, data isn't, data isn't just a group of numbers on a page. It's a description of a group's positioning. That's why data is important. It's a description of our positioning, especially in terms of how we talk and hear a lot about wealth. 
It's about slavery and the cruel disadvantage has rendered us a bottom caste. And anyone who argues against the data is making a racist argument. You know, a lot of racists argue against the data. Well, that's not true. Some black people, da 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 Yeah, that's the problem. If you do that, that's the problem. I want to know how he's going to fix this. I want to know all of it. I, I, I think FBA should want to know. See, as I end, I just want to say something real quick. We're at a very interesting moment. <clears throat> very, 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 very interesting. And the reason I had to address Tariq, because I'm not just addressing him. Tariq is a representation of a dysfunction in our community. And he's an albatross around the neck of black politics. You have to decide. I can't decide for everybody. I can't decide for y'all. But everybody's going to have to decide what they want going forward. Do you want to be a part of a political movement that's about transformative politics and about and about bringing it and fighting institutions that have bottom casted us? Are you really about fighting white supremacy? Or or is your desire just to see a bunch of Muppets? You have to decide. I cannot decide for you. If you want to see Muppets, I don't, I, there's nothing I can do. He got the Umar Muppet, the Al, Mu, Al well, well, ours is Burton Ernie. Uh, the, the, the Leechy X. If you just want to watch a man play with dolls, I don't know. That's, 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 I don't know what to say. That's you. If you want to watch a man play with dolls and make buck breaking movies and talk about the bussy and, and busting the bussy. I don't know that's you, but the, we're at a crossroads and the crossroads is asking us a question. Will you get engaged and stay engaged in advocating for serious politics and uplift? Or are you in this for Muppets and Bussy jokes? But I want to tell FBA one thing. As your leader, and he is your leader. He don't want to call himself that because he don't ever want to be responsible for being that. But as your leader, do you want a comedian? Or do you want to be a part of a group that collaborates and moves forward with one another to do transformative politics? I, you have to ask yourself. I can't help you with that. I can't help you. I can't help you figure that out. You know, we have made the case for, for, for ADOS. We have made ADOS 101. We have, the reason we talked about the Supreme Court, which is which Tariq, Tariq was a real agent of chaos. The days, the two days before the Supreme Court, when Byron Allen took his case to the Supreme Court, Tariq made a mess. He was just pooping all over the timeline and saying that it wasn't about that. The civil rights don't matter because Judge Joe Brown told him that. I want to know who you want. Because I don't think any of these people who are doing and making this mess want politics. They don't want politics. Boys don't want politics. Did boys have, did boys have some re weird new Facebook called Black Enough or something like that? All these people come up with this weird stuff. It don't last and all kinds of stuff. Like, listen, I want to know what to read. All the stuff that we talk about. All the stuff that we talk about in terms of politics. You can't replace that with with frog jokes and 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 strap jokes and and frog jokes and that's not politics that's that's comedy it's, it's bad comedy it's in poor taste but it's comedy this is politics i want to know what you're going to do fba besides yell and scream because it's easier to tear down something than to build up something and it seems to me that all y'all are interested in is tearing down and that's not going to work in terms of our politics and Tariq Nasheed knows it. That's why he's going so hard. He wouldn't be going this hard if he didn't know it. Oh, oh, she in a she in a basement and 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 tone tone. He be he gay. He tried to he tried to squeeze her titties. I mean, it's just I, I, it's the weirdest stuff I've ever heard. And y'all just let him just say whatever. He said like forty different things about Antonio in the documentary. It turns out that wasn't true. That's on Antonio's page. Like he's just he's been scrambling. He threatened, to, he threatened to tell on Antonio, oh, y'all, oh, this woman uh, didn't have nothing to do with Antonio. Somebody on his page said something about where the money went, where the money go for you had this, you had this charity. I'm going to call the bar because I know you must be, oh, I'm going to call the bar. I saw all kinds of stuff in my DMs. Like, I'm going to call, I'm going to snitch on you. All of a sudden, all of a sudden, it's okay to snitch all of a sudden when you start scrambling. 
So, I mean, I just think you, I, let me close out, but you know, everybody has asked, answered the question for themselves. You got to answer the question for yourself. Like, who is Tariq Nasheed and what is he worth to you in terms of your life? I want everybody to look at your life right now. And when you look at your bank account, don't just think about today. You have to retire one day, right? There's one day where you're not going to be able to work. You got kids, everything you need. I want you to ask yourself, can the things that you need be solved and corrected by a second rate comedian? Or do you need to be a part of a collective movement to change our wealth position, get our due and get a black agenda? Only you can answer that. Only you can answer whether or not you want to get serious about your life or whether you want to be a part of a joke. So that's my last word. Take a quick break 